for something that just wasn't completely warped in Christian propaganda. Cause I know that's all we've been doing lately. I mean, I found shit like Kobe's place. Hi everybody! I want you all to meet our friend, Kobe! Hello everyone! A computer? Come on! My uncle programmed Kobe with all the scriptures in the Bible! I found shit like the Dorbies. <laughs> Dorbies, everywhere I look I see Dorbies. I found Gaither's Pond fish tails. Down, down the hill where the weeping willows grow, where the tree frogs chirp and the sleepy turtles stroll. And I mean, of course, I found the notorious atheist nightmare. Behold, the atheist's nightmare. Now, if you go to the top of the banana, you'll find, as with the soda can makers, they placed a tab at the top. So God has placed a tab at the top. When you pull the tab, the contents don't squirt in your face. But today, we're going to watch an anime that is so obscure and so old that I'm pretty sure that no one, or at least a good small chunk of you, would even know about it. There is only one episode of the entire show that has an English dub, but surprisingly, the English dub voice actors are pretty notable and pretty famous. We have actors such as Dan Green, who played the role of Knuckles the Echidna and Yami Yuki, and we also have Mike Palak, who has played Dr. Eggman or Dr. Robotnik from Sonic X, depending on who you ask. So this may be old and obscure and even a little weird, but trust me folks, we're gonna have a good time because we're in some pretty good hands. So without any further ado folks, I present to you Squirrel and Hedgehog. <laughs> You might think that, you know, that because of the title and the voice cast, that Sonic the Hedgehog is going to be in this, but alas, our hearts are broken. Because the anime was made in 1977, and that pretty much outdates Sonic by at least 14 years. But regardless, this song, it kind of reminds me of the American anthem, Yankee Doodle. So, it sounds to me like this is going to be a patriotic film. I mean, just look at it. The squirrels look, look like they're about to fuck shit up. Like, holy shit, dude. The film actually starts on a serious note, where the weasels begin to invade the chickens and commit mass genocide. <laughs> oh my god. And this is where we're introduced to our main character, Camomile. Wake up, Camomile! Wake up! What's going on? Sorry to wake you, huh? but it's the weasels! They're taking away the chickens! You're saying the weasels are here? That's right! And I'm afraid they are going to attack us next! Oh my goodness! Hurry, go ring the alarm! On my way! Oh! 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 oh. My friends, we're in big danger. If the weasels took the chickens, that means they're coming for us, too. That means we have to do something right away. But how? We can't. We will think of something. But meanwhile... What do you mean? Hmm. How are we supposed to do that? The guards are alert and standing by. <laughs> okay, you know, it's clear that the voice direction for this dub is just nothing to brag about. But Dan Green makes for a great narrator. The squirrels are a happy and hard-working community who live in peace with the animals in the forest. I mean, you can clearly tell that Dan Green is working with a team of amateurs here. So the next day, the squirrels are... Uh, um... <laughs> do you need help there? Oh, I am the most powerful bear. I am most elegant, too. I can sing and dance the trot, but also have the strength of two. Okay. You know, Mike Pallick, he may be a great voice actor, 
but, you know, he's no singer. Good oh. morning, Sansorso. You scared me. I thought you were the weasels. The weasels? I wish they would appear. I would show them who's boss. <laughs> I heard about the chickens. If they try the same with you, they'll have to deal with me. So Mike Palak is playing the role of Sansorso, the bear, and he begins to show off his strength and further negotiates teaming up with the squirrels. <laughs> Hooray for Sansoro! So wait, is it Sansoro or, or is it Sansorso? Sansorso? I am Sansorso! Hooray for Sansoro! Sansaro has shown great strength and friendship to us. Dear squirrels, from now on we have a new friend and protector, Sansorso. I mean, you know, I'm gonna go with Sansorso. I just think that's a cooler name. We squirrels cultivate the ground. We build nice houses, but it is hard to live among the weasels who want to conquer and control the Valley of the Lotus. Write a message to all the animals of the valley. The weasels think they can crush us by force, but we can crush them with laughter. That's your plan? Dude, you know, you can't just, you know, laugh your problems away. I mean, if it only took the laughter, then all of the world's problems would be solved. So now we're introduced to the weasels, who are trying to figure out an effective way to invade the squirrels and hedgehogs. Oh yeah, I almost forgot to tell you, there are hedgehogs. So the weasels summon a couple of rats to spy on the squirrels and hedgehogs in a secret house in the forest where they're having a feast. How nice it is that we can all be together. We had such a huge meal, but it seems to me that it ain't the whole Excuse me, friends, excuse me. It's true that we should have fun, but let us talk about how we should behave. Yeah, you filthy animals. You need to learn to behave at the table and, you know, stand up right like humans do. I mean, even though humans are are clearly not canon to this. We hedgehogs will defend our freedom at any cost. Long live Lotus Valley! Thank you, my friends. Commander Sting's words make me happy, and I am sure that we all agree. Long live freedom, long live our dear valley, and long live all the nice and good animals. Calamine, uh, the ducks are arriving. They bring news. Okay, let's go. Okay, so the ducks bring back a comrade, and, you know, the comrade was captured by the weasels. The rat notices the ducks are on their side because, you know, we clearly, you know, knew that as the audience, you know. We, we, were, we, we knew this since the beginning of the episode. That was explained to us. Yeah. Please take good care of him. Hmm. Poor Cyclamen. I'll just bet that if I hadn't written that message to the weasels, they wouldn't have had a reason to kidnap him. Huh? Hey, Chamomile! Oh, you, you shouldn't regret what you've done. It was the right thing to do. The weasels will never take our freedom away, you hear? Because I, Sansorso, will crush them. <laughs> oh, god damn, Dr. Eggman. I mean, uh, uh Sansorso. Uh, you scared me. And you clearly scared the rats, too, to which they get caught, and the squirrels are completely okay with the idea that they're being spied on. Oh, those the dirty rats were rats. spying Can on us. Can you believe it? Now they're gonna report everything, Chamomile. Let them report it. Let them know that all the animals in the forest are in agreement. You can say that again. And we hedgehogs are willing to fight if need be. We ducks fight anywhere, anytime. Right, but we're peaceful animals. Are you suggesting we go to war? Even the gentlest animals should defend their right for freedom, and that's what we'll do. He's right, you know. Good. Yes. Good. Everything is in order. Very good. Carry on. Excellent. Oh, uh, uh. Mm-hmm. Because you fucking bricks just can't ever be quenched. Your, uh, your fantasies can't ever be quenched, can they? Perfect. In recognizing a communist, physical appearance counts for nothing. If he openly declares himself to be a communist, we take his word for it. If a person consistently reads and advocates the views expressed in a communist publication, he may be a communist. If a person supports organizations which reflect communist teachings, or organizations labeled communist by the Department of Justice, she may be a communist. 
If a person defends the activities of communist nations while consistently attacking the domestic and foreign policy of the United States, she may be a communist. If a person does all these things over a period of time, he must be a communist. But there are other communists who don't show their real faces, who work more silently. Yeah, a winning can. Good. Oh, it's hot as an oven out here. <sighs> I'm heading back. Any news, Sergeant? There's nothing to report, sir. Everything is calm. Keep up the good work, Sergeant. Mm -hmm. Keep watch for any movements. I think the weasels are going to attack soon. The job of lookout is one of the most important jobs in the Army. So the weasels are specifically concerned that Sansorso, the bear, is working for the squirrels and hedgehogs. Sansoro? So they devise a plan to intoxicate Sansorso using hawthorn juice. Uh, okay. <laughs> The job of lookout is one of the most important jobs in the army. Sansorso! <laughs> Hello there, Sansorso. What's this? Greetings, mighty Sansorso. Mm, knowing how much you like Hawthorne juice, I took the liberty of bringing you two bottles as a gift. You can drink up at once! <laughs> how dare you come over here? You think I don't know that you work for the weasels? <laughs> Go away right now! I don't want to see you or your juice! Yeah, you know, the rats really suck at being discreet, especially when they need to be. It's almost like they can't even do their fucking job right. Good heavens, those nasty rats. What? I'm out! Wait a minute. That rat had some juice. Well, I guess he didn't even need to be discreet in the first place because the bear took the fucking drink anyway. So, Sensorso gets drunk, and the weasels attack the forest. Job of look at it. And Camomile just can't seem to get him up. Sensorso! What happened to you? Oh, come on, wake up! What? Oh. Oh shit, it's a lot worse than I thought. I'll take care of it. I'll be fine. Don't, don't you worry. Uh, let's go. Ooh, watch oh, out, oh, 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 nice of you. Get two of you to come here. Uh, okay, come on this oh, way. Okay. Uh, I'll just, I'll hold Are you okay, my friend? Are you sick? God damn, dude, you know, I'm not that big a drinker as you folks know, but, you know, at least I can hold my alcohol. To the rescue is the powerful story of a teenager. Come on! Come on! for breakfast, am I? Oh, Paul! Now that acting is so fucked up! <laughs> Thanks for swinging by, and I hope you had a good time. I had fun. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Be sure to subscribe and, you know, peace out. Okay, you know, probably not. So basically, Camomile starts walking in the autumn and pretty much starts crying like a little bitch. <laughs> Ha <laughs> ha
And then, just like the little bitch that he is, he gets captured by the weasels, so it's up to the fucking hedgehogs to release him. This is really the end of it. <laughs> Get a move on, let's go! <laughs> Chamomile, over here! Huh? <laughs> 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 Oh, damn, you know, these hedgehogs, they're badass, you know, these gotta be my favorite characters, because, you know, we wouldn't get another hedgehog with a gun until Shadow the Hedgehog in 2005, but, you know, Shadow is nowhere near as cool as these hedgehogs. Where's that damn fourth Chaos Emerald? That way! <laughs> Anything new, Golden Beak? See for yourself, Gosling. Right away. Not even good enough to be I'll my make you eat those. Okay, okay, fine. You know, I'll stop with the Sonic comparisons, but you can't deny that the dubbing in this show is just not that good. So the ducks plan to make a a a, a, a duck bridge to get Camomillo and the hedgehogs to safety. Everyone advance! Move out! Okay, that was legitimately funny. Don't worry, Chamomile. I'll take you to our headquarters. Follow me. Okay. Uh, okay. Okay. Come on, dude. Are you fucking kidding me? Actually, this type of camera panning is littered all throughout the video. In fact, Here's a couple examples of times that the animators just couldn't think of anything better to pad out the animation with than just long-term camera padding. Sir, I have saved Chamomile. Good job, Decisio. Thank you, sir. They both had the same voice actor, and I couldn't even tell which one was talking. Oh, come on. It's fucking water. What did you do? Belly flop the water? Did you hit your head against a coral reef? We have to respond to the call of duty and be ready to fight. Do you hear me, Chamomile? We must fight. You're right. We have to do something. The idyllic valley of the Lotus is about to be torn apart by war. And so the little squirrels and the hedgehogs decide to unite and fight against the tyranny of the weasels. Whoa, <laughs> they're not fucking around anymore. Together then. Damn, dude. This is one hell of an anime. I mean, I wonder if... Who and what the fuck are you? Beep beep. I'm Thomas the Tanky. I'm a Marxist Leninist communist who hates imperialism. Okay, well, what's your purpose here? I mean, are you here to like convince me that I should be worshipping Stalin or something? That too. But the anime you just watched was not made in Japan. It was made in the DPRK, also known as North Korea. This film was made by the Scientific Educational of Korea Studios, who went on to make this show up until the 2000s. The show is blatant North Korean propaganda, and the characters are symbols of certain nations and people groups. The squirrels and hedgehogs are the North Koreans, the weasels are the South Koreans, the rats are the Japanese, I mean look at their eyes, and the bear is the Russian. You can tell because when this came out, the North Koreans were fighting against the South Koreans and the Japanese, and the Russians were promising to help them out, but they ditched them in the end. This anime teaches North Korean children about Jinche, the philosophy of self-reliance, which is why North Korea are known as the hermit country. And trust me, this anime is so fucking brutal that they show full-scale war and animals getting fucking impaled. Oh, wow. Well, I mean, thanks for that insight. I 
I mean, I guess the more you know, you know. Also, Stalin did nothing wrong, and he honestly tried his best. Castro gave other countries doctors and- Hey! Hey! This is my show. This is not your show. So, shoo! Shoo! Get out of here! <laughs> Fucking imperialist. Well, you know, this was a very odd and very obscure anime with a dark backstory. I don't even know if I classify it as an anime. I mean, to me, it's just more like propaganda. Very secular, totalitarian, nationalist propaganda. I can only imagine what the kids in the DPRK or in North Korea must be going through or must be getting brainwashed with when they see this blatant propaganda as they endure the hardships of prison labor camps and things like that. <laughs> Thanks for watching, and be sure to subscribe if you had a great time, and also be sure to like the video, subscribe, if, do it again, do it again, and make sure that you do it three times, that way it makes sure that you, 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 you subscribe again, and, and do it again and again and again, and just keep doing it, never stop subscribing, just always subscribe to my channel, just subscribe a million times, make bot channels if you need to, don't actually do that, please just don't, I don't need bots.